So what I'd like to talk about is geodesign at all scales of planning. Um, my name is Devin Levine. I'm a city planner, urban designer, uh, special expertise in 3D. I do a lot of 3D work, a lot of GIS work. Um, and our firm, House Hill Levine Associates, is a company I started about 15 years ago. We do work at all different scales, so from the parcel all the way to the region, uh, everywhere in between. Um, national experience, we're working in, I think, 22 different states. Uh, one of the things we say, though, is we innovate. We like to be innovative. We like to have fun while we do it. Uh, and definitely the uh, Esri technology and all the geodesign tools that we use has really helped us innovate. Um, there's a graphic we showed last year uh, up on stage. It was this. We call this our geodesign toolbox. And when we sat down and we started to look at all the different software that we use to get in and out of our plans, um, this shows, I think, 15. Uh, last count, I think we're at about 20. Uh, there isn't any single piece of software that we use that uh, has been a real crutch for our firm. Uh, just that we want to make sure that our plans are clear, the message is clear, the recommendations are sound, uh, they're substantiated in data, uh, and that the, at the end of the day, the stories that we're telling the communities, our clients, our plans, they're easy to read, they're easy to be understood, they're graphically compelling and engaging. And that's really been a hallmark of our firm, and we use this sort of geodesign toolbox um, really every day to get in and out of the different plans. And it includes low-tech sketches, uh, the Adobe Creative Suite, the Unreal Engine, City Engine, and VR, uh, really a whole suite of software. And so to jump into our firm, you really need to uh, be versatile uh, to use a, a bunch of different software. So I'll go through five different examples uh, how we've sort of applied our geodesign workflow, or our geodesign tools at the regional level with some work in Cape Cod. Uh, the county is just kicking off a study in uh, El Paso County, Colorado. I'll look at the districts and neighborhoods for the city of Battle Creek, Michigan, a corridor in Greenwich, Connecticut, and then lastly, a site for a small community on the north side of Chicago called Round Lake Heights. So Cape Cod, Christy's going to be going into depth about this uh, in the next couple of speakers, but I'll walk through you what our role was uh, on this plan. So we were hired by the, uh, the Regional Planning Commission to help with their regional policy plan. And our contract was real specific. They wanted us to help with the maps, uh, any illustrations, and then ultimately lay out the document. And something Jack mentioned earlier that was really key for us to work uh, on this project with their staff was WebGIS. And so while their planners uh, were continuing to uh, curate data, to build GIS data, we, built, we had live connections to uh, their servers uh, that allowed us to create the maps while they were still working. And so we were in Chicago, they were in Cape Cod. We were continuously working on the maps and the graphics while their staff was updating the data. We also handed over to them a style guide, so let them know what colors of blues we were using, the colors of browns, those hatch tones, all the labeling that took place inside of ArcGIS Pro. Um, because staff was still compiling maps, so we, we gave them a kickstart. I think we did 10 maps. Then we gave them all the tools that they needed to, uh, to continue the maps themselves. Something else they had, they had uh, a transect. They, had this, they said there's eight different types of places on the Cape. And uh, this was done by one of their planners. A great sketch, but they wanted to see if we could do it in the 3D software. So uh, they had done so much work inside of GIS, so we, our approach was to use City Engine. So we had them identify with these purple squares, where are these sort of typical place types? And from there, we took a zoom in, and this is their GIS data, really rich. They have uh, parking stripes, edge of curb, uh, vegetation. It made us real easy for us to go in and clip all these areas and bring them into City Engine as sort of shapes. And then what we did is we wrote rules for pavement, brick pavers, uh, yellow stripes on the pavement, white stripes, uh, vegetated areas, uh, procedural models that would pop up the buildings. Uh, and so we took their transects and we created this illustration for them to show them these are the eight different places uh, on the Cape. And then each one is sort of a, a blowout, working with uh, their staff to write the text. We handled the, uh, the 3D work. So a real, I think, great collaboration. It happened fast. Uh, we had only about, about a month to, uh, to knock off all of these uh, illustrations and graphics. 
Uh, and something I think that couldn't have happened but for uh, WebGIS and the richness of the data set that, uh, that Cape Cod has. Uh, something here now we're just kicking off. So we're working in El Paso County, Colorado. If you've not heard of it, it's where Colorado Springs is located. Managed Springs, Fountain. Population is about 700,000 people. Uh, geographically, it's 2,100 square miles. Uh, and so we're trying to figure out how the best way to engage um, this county. And as we get into uh, the master plan, we need to reach out to uh, the residents. And so for this, we're taking our first shot at using Hub. So uh, this will be, we're hoping to sort of beta test a Hub initiative that gets at a master plan. And so how do we engage uh, 700,000 people across 2,100 square miles into a planning process? We think this is a perfect opportunity for our firm to begin using Hub. So we've set up this Hub initiative for the master plan, this sort of call to action, letting the residents know what the goal is. Um, we want to make it real simple. How can they get involved? Take a questionnaire. We're using Survey123 for the questionnaires. Uh, attend a workshop. Hub has a great uh, calendar sort of plug-in built right into it. We're using that. And then Map.Social is a uh, uh, mapping tool where people can go map their priorities. We're going to track the progress down here. What we love about this is it's simple. It's one really one page that we're we're using to, uh, to keep people informed on the process. Uh, all the data that we create through the course of the study, we're going to publish into this open data portal, which will drive these dashboards you're seeing up here. Uh, and then it's, all the maps are fully interactive, the calendar of events. So we're happy to uh, jump in and move away from what we would have done in WordPress. Uh, and now we're sort of strengthening our integration with the, uh, with the ArcGIS suite. So here's the survey one, two, three. Uh, in the past, we used to ask, a, say, a school district to describe to us where they're acquiring parcels. Survey123 will allow us to have them put a pin on a map, let us know where they're holding land, where they're looking to acquire land. Uh, so there's some great things there. And then this is the, the map.social, where the residents will be able to go in and start mapping out where they think the regional assets are, um, where are the priority sites, roadway improvements. So we customize this legend per project. So it's all tied into one hub initiative we're excited to be rolling out. Looking at the city scale, Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, hired us to do a master plan. This is, I think, the first time where we strayed away from uh, doing our work in Adobe, the Adobe Creative Suite, and we tried to do everything inside of ArcGIS Pro. Um, and so all the things that we do, when we do a master plan, we're looking at uh, the demographics, what are the trends, what are the spending potential. We hear from a community the things that they want. We have to make sure it's realistic. And so... Uh, a detailed analysis of demographics and market is key. As we get into that, then we start to develop uh, our land use plans. Um, so again, all of these graphics were done in ArcGIS Pro. We think we've sort of come close to uh, doing the quality of work we used to do in, inside of Adobe Illustrator. So Pro has allowed us to do that. We mapped out all the green infrastructure areas. Um, so what is that uh, blue-green? Uh, resources, the parks, the open space, the water recharge areas, uh, the catalyst sites, all these graphics done inside of Pro. It's made it easy for us to jump into a story map for them to help get the word out. Uh, but something we did on this project, uh, there was this catalyst site they wanted us to look at uh, along the, the waterfront. And so we used City Engine to show them the potential of this lakefront area. Um, and when we did this, there's a, there's a company in, in Battle Creek, it's, it's Cyril City, it's uh, Kellogg's. And so the Kellogg Foundation saw this, and they asked us, what would our city look like if we redeveloped the whole city? And so based on this drawing, they love seeing the potential of the waterfront. They wanted to see what the potential was for the entire city. So they asked if this was something we could do. So what we had to do was uh, really write these rules in City Engine so we broke the city down into the different land use typologies. So what would a traditional neighborhood look like? What would a multi-unit uh, residential neighborhood look like? The neighborhood commercial, the community open space. And we had to really test these on every single parcel. When you look at uh, sort of how messy a city's uh, parcels can be. Um, and so we run little tests, whether or not it's going to generate a big enough building for someone to build a house or uh, the type of use for a, maybe a fast food restaurant on the commercial corridors. Uh, so we took all these different place types and we applied it to the city. We also looked at the different types of roads. We look at a city like Battle Creek, 100,000 people, lots of different types of streets. So we have street typologies. I think there are 
12 different types of streets, whether it's a four-lane highway. So we wrote our own uh, street rules for City Engine, and all of that was applied onto something that I called a turtle for the longest time. It looked like a, a turtle. Um, and when we put this into uh, City Engine, we sort of started to get this. And this is an early export where we're just coloring by land use. Uh, then we started to really test our, our rules. So we're generating neighborhoods in here, uh, multifamily residential. This was a river walk that they had uh, planned out. Um, so this shows this city. You know, if you follow the recommendations of the master plan, looking at things like uh, height, uh, access, uh, proximity to the sidewalk, residential densities. This is how the city would, uh, would develop. Uh, we gave them a 3D web scene where they can sort of go through. So here we're looking at these white buildings. These are existing. Uh, they're able to sort of tab over to see what the master plan recommendations are. So if we take this vacant Kmart site right here at the uh, entrance of town, we could click on the master plan. And these are the developments generated by uh, our city engine rules. And so they've used this now uh, to fund a lot of economic development efforts. They're marketing all of these sites uh, within town, taking our, our city engine work to sort of show the potential of some of these uh, vacant sites within their uh, core area. Um, so it's really been a fun project, integrating some existing 3D work, this river walk here, uh, with the, uh, the city engine procedural models that we're generating on the fly. And the last thing we did on this project was brought, we brought it into Unreal Engine. Uh, gives the render, I think, just a much uh, better look. Uh, moving on to another scale in Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh, we, we were hired to do a plan of conservation and development, which is a, it's what they call their master plans in Connecticut. Um, but the key issue here is there's a corridor right through town called Putnam. It's Highway 1. Uh, it's historically been their commercial corridor. And what we heard from this community as we got in to helping them with their plan was that they were dissatisfied with the look of all the new development. And they told us there wasn't a development that had been built in the last 10 years that they liked. And so we held a workshop uh, at the high school gymnasium. And here I am running through this uh, interactive web scene. So what we did is we showed them, here is your corridor, and here's all the buildings. And this area here, this is the stuff they like. This is Downtown Greenwich, beautiful place. Uh, buildings are at close to the sidewalk. And some of this stuff is the stuff they don't like. And so um, we modeled out their existing build form. And then we took all of their zoning regulations. We brought it to City Engine. And we said, based on your zoning, this is what could be built. And so when you contrast what they like versus what could be built, uh, we're able to show them it's their zoning ordinance that's really prohibiting them from getting the community that they want. Um, so things like zero front yard setbacks in key parts of the corridor, reducing side yard setbacks. Um, so I think this was the only building that to me came close to what uh, the zoning had allowed uh, and really helped open the eyes of the residents here in this community about how they need to update their zoning to really uh, start to get the development they'd like. Looking at a single site, uh, this was sort of a more traditional, I think, geodesign process. We looked at a vacant site in Round Lake. Uh, and so what we did is we looked at the wetlands. So heavily, uh, this was a site, by the way, that the city was looking to acquire. They thought it was a vacant opportunity. They wanted to acquire it. They wanted us to see what the potential was for development before they spent municipal money on it. So we looked at where the wetlands were located. Uh, we took a look at ownership. Um, we looked at the topography. There's some, definitely some steep slopes in here. We ran this into uh, ArcGIS for a uh, slope analysis. The red are those 10% or greater slopes we're going to want to avoid. Uh, and all of this came into what we call the build a suitable, uh, buildable suitability analysis. So these yellow areas uh, suitable for development, the green. The red are going to be those areas we stay away from. We also did a detailed market study. We looked at 10, 15 minute drive times. What we found was uh, a ton of opportunity for uh, really every single type of housing product. And there's a, a big hole in this area for, uh, for retail. But it's not well accessed, so the retail we were looking at was local commercial. We worked with a local traffic engineer to help us uh, identify where we'd likely be able to get in, access in and out of the sites. Then we looked at the current zoning, existing land use, what the land use plan said, 
and then we came up with this land use uh, model. So we presented this to our client, the city. This is what we're thinking, residential, commercial at the corner. Uh, they liked it with their approval. We did a couple of sketch plans. So we, we still use pen and paper. We sketched this out. Primary difference here is where this commercial is located, the parking interior, exterior. Um, and they told us they wanted sort of a more uh, closed in village center type look. So from there, we brought it into City Engine with just some rules. Uh, we modeled out the terrain as a digital elevation model, uh, put in the water, put in where the parking lots would be, the buildings, and ultimately used City Engine to generate this rendering for, uh, for them. So there's the two different views looking in each direction. Um, and then this was the final master plan. So where the access is, all of our notes that are in there, and the city has since acquired this parcel. So these are, I guess, the geodesign at all scales of planning. Uh, last thing I'll leave you with is how we sort of have had fun with the tools that uh, we have. We do a lot of 3D work. Uh, there's something called the Unreal Engine. You saw that one example of uh, that real rich looking illustration. Uh, city Engine exports right into Unreal, it's great. Um, there's another video game engine that we use. We play some capture the flag at the office. Um, so it's called the Source Engine. And so what we wanted to see is could we get our office into uh, this video game engine. And so we use a lot of SketchUp, City Engine, Photoshop, ArcGIS Pro, and then Hammer. So it started out as a pet project with a colleague, uh, Nick and I, uh, Nick Davis and I. We started to think, can we model out the office? And so we started taking photos, and our staff got real suspicious. Uh, we were constantly taking pictures of our f with our phone. And we had a, uh, the floor plan from the architect, so we started to sort of walk through the lobby, taking pictures and even making little sketches, how big our desks were, our filing cabinets. Um, and then we started to look out the windows and we're like, well, we can't just model what's in our office. So we're in downtown Chicago, we can see this great uh, cityscape. Should we model that? And so we took the uh, OpenGIS data from the city of Chicago, we built a 3D model of downtown, and then we used ArcGIS Pro to figure out what buildings are visible from our office. So we don't want to model all of downtown Chicago, just what we could see from our windows. And so using these, uh, these tools inside of the Esri stack, we were able to sort of wean down a 4,000 buildings to 1,000 to, I think, about 250 facades. Um, so the yellows are the facades that we need. Red is not, totally not visible from our office, so we started to purge. Uh, then we started looking at details in the streetscape. The street itself, so we, we made these textures in Photoshop, um, and we started to sort of lay it out, and I think it was right here was when we were sort of really on board, like, oh my god, this is going to be great, let's continue to do it. So we started to identify all the different textures we needed, uh, and using City Engine, SketchUp, and Photoshop, uh, this is now the digital model, so here's our entry sign, here's the digital model, this is all inside of our, our space. Um, and then where I think it really pops is we get to the exterior where we use the, the full-on Esri tools to get into these great cityscapes. Um, so it's, uh, I guess we're fortunate enough to have all these great tools to allow us to have some fun with it as we got into uh, um, this. So with that, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, there's some links there for some of the stuff. Uh, the ArcGIS Online link will give you some of the 3D web scenes that I've talked about. You can feel free to poke around on that. If you want to see our full geodesign story, it's that hla.fyi slash geodesign. So with that, thank you very much.